once again anywhere where they watch us from welcome to earth matter today and saturday and as it be saturday you know as we they take down we they discuss everything we get to do with earth with our certified doctor talking about no other person but dr bartolomeo ufebulam ceo grace valley medical center good morning sir yeah good morning chief good to have you here once again sir. so pleased to be back what happened? Doctor is wearing shoes. I'll yeah. talk about that. <laughs> Slimmers. Doctor, Good compliment. Morning. Yeah, thank you very much. Good morning, viewers at home and around the world. We are happy to be back this morning on Health Matter on WAP TV. Today we'll be looking at a topic we started some few weeks ago. HIV AIDS. HIV AIDS. What is it all about? We're going to give an overview of all we have been able to talk about in the course of this presentation and as well as Go as far as treatment, if, the, if, if time can allow us today. Okay, by way of introduction, we'll make an attempt to give a definition as we always do. Okay, what are the types of HIV? If there are any, we're going to talk about them. How is HIV transmitted? How can it be prevented? What are the, th the things we, know, we need to know about testing services when it comes to HIV? Are they risk factors, things that we need to avoid? so that we don't uh, get infected with this deadly uh, infection, okay? Now, HIV, as we all know, simply means human immunodeficiency virus, virus. okay? is the virus that is responsible for AIDS, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, okay? Now, these two words are things that we all know. We may have heard of them in one way or the other. Now, by way of history, researchers believe that the first uh, discovery about HIV was before the year 1931, when they claimed that they found HIV in a blood sample that was taken from a man from, Democra uh, Demo uh, Demo uh, from Congo, Democratic Republic of Congo. Here, uh, here in Africa, okay? But afterwards, there were other documented, verifiable history of HIV, especially in the United States of America. In the year 1968, for instance, a 16-year-old African-American boy was found to have had an unusual disease that nobody knew what the diagnosis was all about. But many years afterwards, with the power of hindsight, with the benefit of the tissues that were taken from this young boy that were tested afterwards, it was discovered that the boy actually suffered from HIV AIDS. At that time, that was in 1968. Now, over the years, there have been a lot of significant achievements that have been made on HIV. Don't forget, we can't shy away from the fact that the stigma that, associated, that is associated with this deadly virus is still here with us yeah. today but not as much as it used to be in time past. I can tell you that there were some notable events that have happened over the years concerning the stigma that has to do with HIV. For instance, in the year 1987, uh, 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 America banned visitors and immigrants from coming into the United States of America if they, if they test positive to HIV. But this, was, <clears throat> this, was, this decision was resigned in, in, in 2010 by, uh, by then President Barack Obama. Okay? Also, in the year 1983, a doctor who had HIV, who almost uh, was going to be evicted on account of his HIV status, had to go to court. Mm -hmm. And it was said to be the first discrimination lawsuit that happened in the U.S. So over the year, those discriminations have been there as a result of the stigma that people have for so HIV. it didn't just start. It didn't just start today. But thank God, with the knowledge that we have today, with the benefit of the advancements that have been done along this disease, all of these are beginning to wear off. So that is why it's important that you and I need to know our status today. Let's look at a little bit of statistics. 32 million people were said to have died since this scourge began in mm. the 1980s. Currently, 37 point, uh, about 38, 38 million people are said to be living. WHO actually said 37.9 million people are currently living with HIV AIDS today. And out of this figure, more than two-thirds of them are from Africa. That is to say that about 25.7 million of people 
who are today living with HIV mm -hmm. are in Africa, WHO African subregion. So you can see that it is a disease that has so much to do with us Africans. So we need to help ourselves. Mm -hmm. And how can we do this? By knowing mm -hmm. our status. status. Now, also, the stigma too. Some of the reasons that have helped to uh, push down the stigma that, uh, that we used to know with HIV is because of the fact that today it is just more or less a manageable chronic illness, mm. just like diabetes and hypertension. What that means is that you can have a good quality of life even if you're HIV positive without being adversely affected by this scourge. So long as you do one thing, so long as you continue to take your ART, your antiretroviral drugs, first of which was discovered in the year 1987. Mm. That was when the first one was discovered. Talking about Zidovudin, that was the first antiretroviral uh, okay. uh, drug that was discovered. And over time, a lot have changed. Suffice also to say that today, with the scaling up of the awareness and services, HIV services, there are a lot of significant achievements that have been made over the years. For instance, from the year 2000 to 2018, there have been a significant reduction in the number of deaths that are associated with this scourge. Today's extent that about 13.6 million people were saved between this period. Okay? What that means is that 37.5 uh, uh, reduction in new cases that, are, uh, uh, that have to do with HIV, 45% reduction in deaths that are HIV related, mm. giving rise to saving a, uh, uh, a large number of people who, may, who probably would have, would have been dead by now as a result of this scourge. So this morning, we are still looking at HIV AIDS. Mm -hmm. How is it transmitted? What are the types? HIV 1 and 2 simply talks about the, sp the strengths of HIV. What is the mode of transmission? HIV can be transmitted, as we all know, through number one, uh, Unprotected sexual exposure, that is the major one. Number two, it could also be transmitted from mother to child, otherwise known as vertical transmission. It can also be trans, trans, uh, uh, transmitted from one person to the other through sharing of unsterilized yeah. sharp objects. Okay, Sometimes that can happen in the hospital. Before the 1980s, a lot of people were transfused with uh, non Sterilized. No, no, no. Uh, Blood that were not screened. screened. Okay, so that gave rise to a lot of people being infected with this uh, scourge, even when people did not know so much about it mm. at that time. Okay, but that is not that does not happen today again because of where we are today. Okay, so those are the things that we need to talk about this morning. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Um, uh, from what from what you've listed so far, I think there are, uh, there are some aspects I like to ask. The issue of fluid semen. Is it also a means of transmission or, yes, transmission of each other? Not just, not just body fluid generally, but we need to make a differentiation here. You cannot transmit HIV by having a, hand, a casual ah, handshake okay. with or an sweat. individual or, or through sweating or through mosquito bites. Okay, okay but HIV yeah. can be through mosquito bites. Okay. That <laughs> cannot be transmitted. But HIV can be transmitted through not just semen like you mentioned, vaginal fluids, mm. okay, vaginal secretions too. Can, transfi can transmit HIV. Also, HIV can be transmitted through deep kissing. Anything ah. that has to do with contact with blood, okay, and body fluids. Mm. That have, has to do with deep contact with blood and body fluids can actually transmit. Suffice also to say that be from mother to child, HIV can be transmitted through, number one, pregnancy, delivery, and as well as breastfeeding. Okay, but doctor, how do they do? We've had, we've had cases of women that were pregnant, you know, they were HIV positive, but they gave birth to children that were not HIV positive. Thank you very much for that medical question, my <laughs> illness. Now, that is possible, okay, because of the fact that those people know their HIV status. They know their HIV status, and of course, that was why it is possible. So, the journey starts by knowing one's HIV status. Now, when you know your HIV status, if you're HIV positive, you need to start treatment, okay? Irrespective or regardless of your CD4 count and other, other parameters that need to be measured. That is the current teaching from WHO. So you need to start treatment. And when you start this treatment, ART, antiretroviral therapy or drugs, when you start this treat treatment, there are no breaks in between, mm. no gaps in between. If you're effective with this treatment, you can actually get married, mm. 
to a non-HIV uh, person, a person who does not have HIV, you can actually get married to such a person. Two people who have HIV can actually get married as well and can actually give birth yeah, to an offspring that will not have HIV at the end of the day through the use of this drug. Now, it, uh, uh, it has been scientifically, scientifically proven, okay, this study uh, was as uh, far back as just 2017. It has been scientifically proven that if once HIV load is undetectable, mm. the person cannot transmit HIV. What that means is that undetectable equals to untransmittable of HIV. Okay, so what that means is that if you're in a relationship and you have a partner, a known partner that has HIV and you do not have either a male or a female, the findings, the technology has gotten to a level where you people can make offspring without you, one of the partner who is not, not infected, getting infected at the end of the day. Mm. That is possible today. Mm. And uh, can we say this is possible via constant use of the drugs or there exactly. is some technical technology? Not that there is no technology. Constant use of drugs. Okay, that's why it is important that people should get to know their HIV status. Now, HIV are usually, there are three stages of HIV. Number one, you have the acute primary infection or the acute HIV. Number two, you have the chronic HIV. And number three, you have the AIDS, which is, of course, is the final stage. It does you no good shying away from going to get tested for HIV. The truth of the matter is that with or without symptoms, you could have HIV without knowing. By the mm. time it does manifest, it's going to get to a level when it is far, far advanced at the level of AIDS. At that stage, you may have just mm. between one to three years to live your mm -hmm. life. So it behoves on you as an individual to get tested today, so, at least have an idea of your status. What will that help you to do? Number one, if you have an idea of your status, you're going to start treatment. Mm -hmm. If you start treatment, you help to stop. Of course, you, you're going to improve your quality mm -hmm. of life. Okay, in the sense that the, what the treatment does is that HIV, remember, we said at the beginning that it is not curable. Okay, mm -hmm. so what the treatment does is that it suppresses the virus that destroys the immunity of such an individual. Okay, okay so once that suppression occurs, the person's immunity can return. The person will be able to ward off infection. One of the things that can happen in somebody who is untreated, somebody who has HIV and is untreated, is that the person's immunity gets destroyed over time, okay? And that will give rise to a lot of infections, having a few day on the person's body, the so-called opportunistic infections. But if you know your status and you're, in, you're on treatment, number one, you improve your quality of life. Number two, you stop the spread of HIV to others around you. Mm. If you're on drugs, effectively on drugs, you can actually not pass it across to people, mm. either by way of uh, occupational hazard or some other means of exposure. Right, sexual intercourse. Mm. Of course. They okay, are all included. Yeah, now I wanted to just talk about the hormones, you know, because they will tell you there are some people that are O positive or B, whatever, you know, those ones, they don't come down with malaria easily or they get malaria easily. So I wanted to know if our hormones have anything to do with HIV. Like, okay, if your hormones are strong, you are likely not to get infected like every other person. Thank you very much. I want to approach your question from two angles. Number one is, I want to replace the hormone stuff or the blood group stuff with the word immunity. Mm -hmm. We all have different uh, strengths of immunity mm -hmm. as individuals, okay? Mm -hmm. That accounts for the reason why some people will get infected with some certain uh, infections and it does not manifest in Other, their body, yeah. okay? Now, that also happens in HIV. Suffice also to point out that in some cases, someone could have HIV and will not have any symptoms mm. at all. It could be asymptomatic in some situation. In some situation, someone can have HIV for between two to 10 years, mm. and yet the person does not have any, any symptom whatsoever. It can happen. And this takes us to some of the symptoms that we need to talk about. In HIV stage one, there are different set of symptoms. Stage two, there are different set of symptoms. Stage three, which of course is the eight, there are different set of symptoms. So we're not talking about the acute uh, or primary HIV infection or acute retrovirus syndrome, ARS, okay? You're talking about the period of infection, okay? In which case, when the person became first exposed to the uh, virus, okay? So what happens is that within the first two, two weeks to four weeks of such exposure, 
that some flu-like symptoms that such an individual may experience. It's not total for everybody, okay? Such an individual could ha may have fever, may have swollen glands, may have joint aches, okay, and headache. Those are the initial set of symptoms, which sometimes will wear off, mm -hmm. okay? Within a space of some weeks, few weeks, it will wear off. And then after this acute stage comes the chronic stage. I would say the chronic stage is the latent stage. The chronic stage can also be called the latent stage, okay? Okay, maybe we'll just continue from here. Hey, let's go for so a let's break. Let's go on this mm -hmm. break. We will be right back. Please go nowhere. Where? Health matter na serious matter. Oh. That na why we they always get Dr. Bat Ufe Gunam every Saturday to come teach us and enlighten us on top with health matter. You fit also advertise your product and services on top with show where they help let people. Terms and conditions apply. Shao. HIV stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus. It works by attacking the immune system, the very thing that stops us getting sick. HIV can be found in blood, semen, breast milk, vaginal fluids, and anal mucus. It can be passed on when these fluids enter into another person's body, for example, through sex. You can protect yourself and others from HIV by using condoms, taking PrEP, and not sharing injecting equipment. Most people don't have any symptoms when they get HIV, so testing is the only way to know your status. Getting tested is easy, confidential, and usually free. Only antiretroviral treatment can keep HIV under control. With it, people living with HIV can lead long, healthy lives. It's scientifically proven that people on antiretroviral treatment with undetectable viral loads can't pass HIV on to others through sex. A lot of HIV-related stigma comes from misconceptions about HIV. Know the facts and help us to bust the myths that destroy lives. Okay, you're welcome back to the show. I believe you learned one or two things from that video where we just play. Uh, Dr. Bat will draw more on that. Yes. Know your HIV basics. Know what your HIV you know? basics. What are the basics? These are the things that we have been talking about in the last couple of weeks and we are repeating today. Number one, you need to start doing that by knowing your status. status. Very important. Very important. Earlier this week, uh, I had an opportunity of attending to uh, someone with signs that were so obvious that the person may be having some form of immunosuppressive illness. Mm. Okay, but after canceling this person, whether he or she will want to be tested for HIV, the person declined. And of course, yes, we collected, we took blood sample for those individual for some other tests, but we did not do HIV, HIV test. Uh, no. Okay, she, uh, because he declined. Okay. Doctor, why is it like that? Because most people feel once they know it's like an early grave, I don't know. It is like that, number one, because of the stigma. We just talked about some of the early stigma, sti mm. uh, notable uh, uh, stigma uh, history that we all know about, okay? Mm. So it's like that because of stigma, because of the way society looks as an individual who has this disease. Mm. But I'm happy that all that are beginning to change, okay? But there are some other compelling reasons mm. why, regardless of the stigma, of the mm -hmm. fear, of the misconception, that anybody might have concerning HIV, regardless, you need to be told that getting to know your status will actually help you to solve mm. your health problems. Mm. For instance, this person has a whole lot of rashes all over mm. 
his or her body. I don't want to disclose mm -hmm. the identity mm -hmm. by any way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it has all these signs that she has been, he or she has been struggling to treat mm -hmm. for some period of time, several months. And of course, she wasn't getting, better. he or she wasn't getting any better. Mm -hmm. Okay, so at the end of the day, here you are seated be before a doctor seeking for solution. And you were expecting that the doctor would just prescribe uh, mm. a number of mm. drugs for you to grant you. It is not done that way. Number one, the doctor needs to have a working diagnosis. And in a situation where such an individual declines, what do you do? You're handicapped. You can't do more than that. And this takes us to testing, HIV testing. A lot of us may not know that there are WHO recommended principle, okay, recommended standard that you need to follow when you want to screen an individual for HIV. I said okay. something like confidential again. Yes, we talked, yeah, we talked about it, uh, um, I think, sometime last year. The so-called five Cs. Mm. The so-called five Cs. It is very, very important you do that. Mm. Number one is that you must obtain an informed consent from such oh, an individual. Okay. Irrespective of what you're going to do for the person. If the person says no, that no stands. We mm. have... Oh, no, way. Good morning, Olowe. Hello, good morning. How are you yeah. doing, Olowe? Good morning. I'm fine, I'm fine, doctor. Mm -hmm. Do you get I, questions I for doctor? Uh, yes, yes, yes. I was watching your program. I was watching your program. And it's very, very interesting. Thank, Thank you very you. much, sir. Okay, sir. So do you know your status? Uh, no, 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 no. I've not checked my status. <laughs> Please, you need to know. It's important. <laughs> That's the reason why we are here today. No, no, I know, I know, I, I know. But, but doctor, there's something, there's something I, I want to point out uh, about the issue of this HIV, HIV mask. Because mm -hmm. uh, why is it that, from your comment earlier, when you said that this time was also set in Democratic Republic of Congo, isn't it? Yes. Researchers uh, believed, okay, yeah. not... The not emphatic, not confirmed. not confirmed. The one that is confirmed <coughs> and can be verified mm. was the 1968 case that was found in the United States of America. Yeah. Okay, oh. in one African okay. Am American boy by name Robert uh, Rayford. That was the boy's name, Robert Rayford. He was a 16 year old African American that had a strange illness that nobody knew what the diagnosis was all about until many years after okay. the guy had passed on. They, they kept a number of his tissues. They preserved his tissues for research, okay, in the nearer future. All that, those researches have been carried out and it have been detected that the boy actually suffered and okay. died from AIDS. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Oh, doctor. Okay, yeah. I've, I've had you. <laughs> oh, what I just want to point out is that, let me just digress it to, why is it that it's only uh, Africa, all these incurable disease, everything is originating from Africa. My brother, your, your guess is as good as mine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why, that was why I said that the verifiable one, the other one they said researchers, researchers, researchers believe yeah. that it happened, that it was from chimpanzee, mm -hmm. that hunters came in contact with the blood of chimpanzee, and they existed uh, 100, uh, about 100,000 to 300,000 people were having HIV before 1960s. All those ones are believed, believed, believed. But the documented, the verifiable one, that if you go on Google today, you can you find see. out if the one I've told you about. Oh, and I think it happened okay. Okay. 15th of May, 1968. That has to be a day after my bed. <laughs> <laughs> it happened in the month of May, I'm sure of that. Either 15th or 16th. And okay. earlier, earlier this year, uh, um, not New York Times, one popular uh, uh, US... Uh, not Time magazine. Yeah, Times Magazine, thank you very much, actually did a, 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 an expose of mm. how, and how the boy lived and died and mm. what, of course, he stood for. Mm. Okay, now, now that you have actually brought up this, okay, let me just quickly say one or two things uh, uh, still on the history. Now, at a time, the media was calling HIV AIDS the four H clubs, the four H clubs. They were referring to people who have it as four H clubs. At another time, too, I'll talk about the H shortly. The, the Center for Disease, for Disease Control and Prevention in the U.S., which was actually the body that named AIDS and discovered that AIDS was caused by HIV, mm. at another time in history, in the 1980s, they were referring to it as GRIDS. Mm. What that means is, GRIDS means uh, gay, 
related immunodeficiency syndrome. Mm. Gay related immunodeficiency syndrome, GRIDS. Mm. Now the four H clubs that the media were referring to it at, at that time stood for four words. Hemophiliacs. These are people who may have been transfused with blood that were not properly tested. Okay. Haitians, people from Haiti. Homosexuals, people who have mm. intercourse with men. Mm. And uh, as well as uh, 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 heroin drug users. Mm. People who use injectable drugs. These are the early set of people that HIV was, was discovered to be uh, associated with at that time in the 1980s. But over time, when discoveries were made, they discovered that it can actually be transmitted from one person to the other through sexual means. Mm. Thank you very much. Are you Thank still you. there, sir? I think it's gone. She have gone. Well, the five C's, consent. Mm -hmm. Now, sir, now, talking about screening an individual for HIV, you must follow the WHO recommended guidelines. Four C's, five C's. Five. Okay, number one, we have mentioned you need to obtain consent. an informed consent from such an individual. Somebody Very says important. no. If somebody says it. no, please let the person's no stand. Hmm. Okay, oftentimes, a lot of people may go behind the scene and then screen somebody who has said no. And I have a question for you. If you get the answer, can you, see, take can you tell the person. person? Can you communicate to the person? Will it benefit the person? Will it stop the person from infecting others? The answer to all those questions is no. Okay? So even if you think you, that could help you to protect Sorry. yourself, what about Let's, others around you? Hmm. We have Let's Abdul, Abdul from Taraba. Abdul, good morning. Good morning, Abdul. Good morning, doctor. How are you doing? I'm doing very okay, sir. Okay, mm -hmm. the doctor is here. I the Christmas period. Fine, thank I'm you, fine. Abdul. We are back here. Mm -hmm. Uh, welcome. Yeah, thank you, sir. So my my question is uh, about this uh, HIV uh, and AIDS. Mm -hmm. I think the, the the long period of time that this disease has been existing, I, I think it is good by now. The should find a cure for the disease. Mm -hmm. I don't know what is uh, making the you doctors not uh, uh, finding way. To see how you can trash the disease completely out of the entire world. Thank you very much, sir, for that wonderful mm -hmm. question. And I will answer you, sir. You're welcome, sir. Thank, thank you very much. Now, he asked a very important question. Why is it that researchers, mm -hmm. let's use that word now, and scientists, and of course, it. have not been able to find a cure. In as much as there were speculations, speculations two man. years last year that you guys got a cure, or were they fallacies? One, the number two, vis a vis, sir. What you also had. Uh, There's this popular uh, cliche or mindset of people that they normally say that uh, the World Health wants to make enough money from the sales of uh, antiretroviral mm, uh, That's why they are not. Mm. They now provide the lasting solution. That's two. Then number three, the last one I also wanted to react on, on this question. We've had a Nigerian that came out and said there was yeah, yeah. that How far so far mm -hmm. was just that's the fallacy? Well, you see the progress. Let, 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 me, start, <laughs> let me start from the uh, uh, guest question. Truly, there has not been a cure. A cure has not been found for HIV. However, giant strides have been made in the management of HIV. And I will tell you why. If someone has HIV and the, such a person is on, on, on antiretroviral drugs or therapy, effectively, if the person can sleep with an uninfected wife of his mm. and be able to father a child, that on his own is a monumental achievement mm. yeah. without yes. infecting yeah. that individual. Yeah. Yeah. is as good as having yeah. a cure. I mm. We have Norma from Enugu. Norma, good morning. Good morning, Norma. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Fine. The doctor is here. Please go ahead with your question. Okay. Good morning, Doc. Good morning. It's short word. Okay. Doc, um, still on the last question, the last person asked. Okay. Go ahead. We can hear you. Okay. Um, you know, we... Can if you're still there, there can you turn down the volume of your TV set? Thank you, ma'am. Uh, yeah, we didn't get what you said. Said there were connections. Okay. On the last okay. Okay. Are you hearing me? Yeah, sure, yes, we can. Better now. Yeah. 
there were speculations that there were permanent um, cure for HIV. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank so, you. Um, and uh, a friend of mine, can you hear me? Yes, we can we hear can. you loud and clear. And a friend of mine fell victim. Okay, okay, mm, thank you yeah. so so much. Uh, okay, so and what at the end of the day, I don't know how he it happened, he later died. Mm. He entered into their hands and they told him that there was permanent cure and they started giving him drugs that led to his death. What do you have to say about it? Thank you very much, my sister, for mm. pointing this out. There are a lot of charlatans out there, I must mm. say it. There are a lot of charlatans out there. Taking advantage yeah, of the Taking situation. advantage of people who are already vulnerable, people whose backs are already on the wall. And you're taking advantage of them unduly. Mm. Okay? I've also seen someone, still on your question, I don't want to forget that man's question. Please mm. remind me. Abdul. Someone had a country to come to my consulting room with the, with the wife. And of course, they met me and said, Doctor, supply us with all the names of HIV infected individuals you have known. Uh. We have a cure. Tested and trusted. <laughs> I, started laughing. Laugh. I started laughing. After laughing at number one, I told them that doctors are forbidden. Hmm. That's the word. From disclosing. We're talking about confidentiality. Yeah. Such knowledge is... Patient uh, uh, information is sacred. We don't hmm. talk with it. A doctor will tell you that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if they're looking for names of people, I think they should go on the social media yeah. to announce that people who have HIV should register with come, them, come that they have a cure. Mm. They are all lies, my sister. Mm. As we speak, HIV does not have any cure. Mm. HIV does not have any vaccine at the moment. There are advances that have made on vaccine. A lot of trials are currently ongoing with appreciably good results. Mm -hmm. I must also acknowledge that. I read widely mm. as well. Also, I've also read, read documented evidence of two individuals who were said to have been tested on one particular drug and they were able to, okay? But these are, still, these are things that have not completely been established. Mm -hmm. At that stage, even if they are close to it, we are not yet there. Mm -hmm. And even if we are there at the moment, everybody, if, if we get there, we all know, okay? okay? But what world, we have been uh, able to achieve, what the world has been able mm -hmm. to achieve is the fact that the fact that one is HIV positive does not stop you from having a baby that mm. is HIV negative. Mm. The fact that you are married in a discordant couple setting, in which case your partner is HIV positive and you are mm. not, mm. you need not divorce At your all. partner. You need not anymore. to be afraid. You need not to be afraid. Mm. What you just need to do is ensure that which of the partners, whichever of the partners is infected, gets to be on treatment. Mm. And once the person is on treatment, as a way of giving you an extra confidence, you also need to go on what we refer to as post-exposure, pre-exposure prophylaxis. Mm. Okay, we saw that on that oh, video prep. clip that we watched. PrEP. Okay, mm. so you need to also be on PrEP. There are a certain group of people who need to be on PrEP okay. so that they don't get HIV. Number one, people who are married to HIV-infected HIV, partner. Yeah. Mm. Number two, two people are who, who, are, uh, who indulge in... Uh, uh, um, I don't, I'm, I'm trying to be choosy with my choice of words, okay? Men who sleep with men, okay? Okay, okay. now such people sh need to be on PrEP. Or people who have, or people who sleep with, with both male and females, mm. okay, they need to be on PrEP, such individuals. Or someone who has had a history of sexually transmitted infection in the mm. last six months, which could, uh, or, or with, uh, uh, um, with genital ulcers, mm. penile or vaginal ulcers, such person needs to be on PrEP, okay? So if you have contact and you're living with somebody who has this status, you can actually not pick it if you do all of the things mm. that we are uh, 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 enumerating today, okay? So between you and I, if you're able to get to a level mm. where your HIV viral load is undetectable, you cannot infect people around you. Okay. That is how far science has brought us in terms of prevention of HIV. It not only prevents you from infecting people around you, it also improves your quality of life. Mm. It equips you, it restores your immunity to a level that you're able to ward off infection, okay, without having to... Uh, but the, the truth of the matter is that you need to be on those drugs. No holidays, no breaks. Hmm. We have Choma from Enugu. Okay. Choma, good morning. 
Hello, Jifolo Dodo. Good morning. Good morning, Ma. How are you doing, Ma? It's fine. Uh, Compliment of the season to you. Married. We married. Uh, we made oh, We, we made, made it. it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just, okay, stay tuned. New Year. We are okay. going to do more of that. We made it. Uh, mm. How are you all doing this morning? Uh, we, doing great. we made it. Yeah. Uh, doctor, good morning, good sir. Good morning, good morning, my sister. Compliments, sir. The same to you. Yeah, I'm listening to your program. It's a nice one. Thank you Thank so, you. so much. Uh, please, I have a question for you, sir. I go ahead. My question is, we talked about uh, contacting an uh, HIV through fluid. Yes. Mm. Uh, so... Can one contact it through body as in sweat? From maybe you are sitting in a bus with somebody that is sweating no, and no, there. No, 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 sir. Not that kind of fluid. Not that type <laughs> of fluid. By fluid we mean semen, vaginal secretions. Okay. So those are the okay. fluid we are we are actually uh, uh, okay. referring to. Apart from blood, of course, blood is on its own there. Mm. Uh, then how can someone prevent himself from an husband who has it? The way to prevent yourself, if your wife and your husband has it, is to ensure that your husband gets tested, does a confirmatory test if it is positive. Because we are still going to talk about that shortly. Okay, diagnosis is important. Okay, get tested, does a confirmatory test if it is positive. Such a husband should be started on drugs. If after starting the husband on drugs. He needs to be monitored over then time. If the, what if the husband refuses to go for a test? You can't start anybody on HIV drugs if you've not if you've not done a confirmatory okay. test yeah. for such an individual. Okay, yeah. that's the that's the challenge we have. That's one of the things that stigma uh, uh, stigmatization can <laughs> cause. Okay, we can't stop. Okay. Anybody who refuses to go for treatment cannot be helped. Hmm. It's not a drug. It can, it's not a drug you can go and buy and start giving to someone. Mm. For instance, we will talk about diagnosis shortly because I know we don't have plenty of time. For you to diagnose HIV, once the diagnosis is made, technologies have availed us with self-test kits. In mm. some countries today, even you don't, you don't want to go to hospital or to any diagnosis yeah. center or lab to do the test, you can do it in the confines of your house and confined to anybody that you trust, any healthcare giver that you trust. Okay. You can also do it in a hospital setting. If it is positive, it does not stop there. Mm. You could do a confirmatory test and it could become negative. Mm. If it becomes negative, you're not HIV positive. You shouldn't start drugs. Yeah. It's only when you've done it and a confirmatory test has been done in a government center. In Lagos, usually the teaching hospitals and the NIM and National Institute of Medical, Medical Research at Yaba, those are places where you need to, where we usually send patients to go for confirmatory tests. When that is done, such a person can be started on drugs. If such a person is started on drugs and is a husband, he cannot infect a wife who mm. does not have. Okay? If he's a wife, she cannot infect the husband who, have. who does not have. Okay? The, such a wife or such a husband could also be put on what we refer to as pre-exposure prophylaxis. A, a set of HIV drugs that such an individual who does not have HIV can be taken because he is exposed to a partner who has it. Mm. Okay, that so has been double sure. Yes, mm. <laughs> that's to be sure that that the person is good to go. Okay, so talking about where we left it off, the five, five C's. C's because we must we must uh, mention that consent. confidentiality, yes. informed yes. consent. The person needs to give give a go ahead. Mm. Okay, confidentiality it needs to be a closely guarded secret mm. between you and the okay. person. If the person chooses to say, I've, I've, been, I've been involved in countless number of times, or oh, God, doctor, <laughs> I don't want my mother to know. I don't want my father to know. I don't want my, I don't want my know. spouse to know. Hmm. Some people will say, oh, doctor, why should you consent to that? that it is, no, it is secret. It's what so I swore to be saved. by uh, <laughs> Hippocratic oath. The next one is canceling. You need to cancel the person so that you don't test the person and the next thing the person goes mm. out and kills himself or herself. Cancelling is important. Okay? So the fourth one is correct 
test results, hmm. it is important. You must ensure that the, this individual gets a correct test result. And the last one is connection. You don't stop there. You need to connect this an individual to where he or she can get good treatment. Hmm. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Bart. I think on connection, we need to connect, connect. with our people that we're about to go now. <laughs> we say thank you if you learn one or two things. Yes. And start the recognition again yes, next, next, next week. <laughs> next next year. Year. <laughs> nice one. I, I like that. Okay, from everyone of us. Thank you. Yes, you guys want to too.